Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Liam McCall and today I wanna to tell you guys why I think this is currently the best travel and vlogging setup on the market. All right guys, this is not gonna be a scientific test. These are just my thoughts and opinions when I was building the best vlogging and travel setup to fit my needs. This video is not endorsed or sponsored by any of the brands or companies you see in this video. Once again, guys, just my thoughts and opinions, all right? So I'm gonna take you through the rig and I'm gonna show you every component of it and while doing so, be going through the pros and cons of everything that you see here, all right? Let's begin. Starting with the heart and soul of the rig is obviously gonna be the camera body and my weapon of choice is the Sony A6500. Now I think this is an almost perfect APS-C camera. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the pros and then we'll get into things that I don't like so much. So the pros would be like a beautiful 4K image. Um, another one would be like it has 120 frames per second in HD, which is also a very beautiful image. It has five axis image stabilization built into it. Um, another thing that I really like is all of the filmmaker tools that they built into this, including uh, S-Log2, S-Log3. They have the gamma assist function. They also have zebra stripes, peaking, focus assist audio levels and you know the list goes on so if you're a filmmaker you know this is a really cool camera body to have because it has all that stuff built into it um, other things that i really like is the beautiful viewfinder i like the compact body the buttons feel nice and they also have the touch screen on the back now um, let's go ahead and go into the cons, the things I'm not really a fan of. Um, starting with some of the little quirky things, you know, like the record button being over here on the side. It's just kind of funky, doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, it, it's not a deal breaker for me, it's just one of those things, it's like, come on, why Sony? Um, also, I'm not a fan of the battery life, um, the, especially when you're shooting 4K in here. It's not the worst, but it, it definitely does chew up the battery, so you're gonna have to carry, you know, three or four around your pocket if you're shooting close to all day. Um, a single SD card slot isn't necessarily a deal breaker for me only because of how compact the body is. Obviously I would like to see two, but that's not quite a deal breaker for me. Um, also, uh, let's go ahead and go into the touch screen. Like I said, I'm glad they have it. Awesome Sony, I'm glad you're trying to implement that, but the, the focus, the touch to focus is not quite fine tuned. It's not quite on par with the Canon dual pixel autofocus. Um, that's just one thing Canon's really got nailed down. I think Sony's still trying to catch up. Um, another thing would be like the internal recording. Like I said, guys, a beautiful image if you're just shooting straight from the camera and going into your computer, exporting it for YouTube. But if you're trying to edit this, the codec that they're using is super like CPU intensive. Like, I mean, my computer's running hot whenever I'm editing footage from this, just because of like, you know, the algorithm or whatever it uses to process. It's just, it's super heavy on your computers. And also to go along with internal recording would be, it's only 8-bit 420. You know, I really wish they would have an 8-bit 422 version. I know 10-bit's nice, but 8-bit would be enough for the vlogging stuff. It's just, whenever you're trying to color correct and really color grade that stuff, the 420 is eventually gonna crumple. And that is the camera body. Now we're gonna take a look at my lens of choice. And I went with the Sony 18-105 F4G lens. Now I think this is a beautiful companion for the A6500. It, it's just a really awesome lens to pair up with. And starting with the pros of it, I think 18-105 to is the perfect focal range to have for all vlogging and travel needs. You see, 18 is just wide enough to where I can turn around and it's not gonna distort my face too much, yet I'm not gonna have a problem fitting my face in there. And also 105 is long enough to get some nice looking portraits as well as compressing that background if you wanted to. I think having the power zoom rocker lever on the side is also a really neat feature. Not something I'm gonna be using a lot, but using that versus twisting the zoom ring is going to give you a much smoother shot. Another huge benefit of this lens would be the lens barrel design. You see, whenever I twist the zoom ring here, the lens barrel does not extend, and that is a huge benefit because if I were to throw this up on a gimbal, I do not have to recalibrate the gimbal or anything like that whenever I zoom in or out as you might have to if it was a barrel that did extend. So 
I truly believe this is one of the best lenses out there on the market for this style of shooting. The only con I can see with this lens, and it's not a deal breaker by any means, is only because Sony has you know their electronic engineering stuff in here. It's not like a Canon or a Nikon lens. Whenever I do zoom and I do quick like snap zooms, it does take a minute to like get there. There is a small lag there, but not a deal breaker by any means because like I said, I don't really incorporate zooms into my shots. It's usually just from getting from this focal length to this one. So I really dig this lens and it's perfect for this setup. Now we're gonna take a look at my audio choice. I decided to go with the Sony ECM-GC1M shotgun microphone. Now this is not your typical microphone. It's proprietary to Sony, therefore not a lot of people use it. But I'm um, starting with the things that I really dig about it is there is not a single cable on this camera. Usually you would have one run into the microphone slot over here but this is 100% hot shoe mounted and powered. Therefore, I don't need a battery for the microphone and I don't need cables. It all comes through the Sony Intelligent Shoe here. Now, with that being said, the, there's a lot of cons with this microphone too, and I'm gonna go and just state the obvious. It really does not sound that great. Whenever you compare it to something like the Rode Video Mic Pro, like so, or even the Rode Video Micro, the audio really just does not hold up. And if you guys are interested in seeing a comparison between this microphone and the Rode Video Mic Pro, you can check that out here. Now the audio doesn't just sound awful, but something that definitely doesn't help are there are zero shock absorbers on this microphone. So, you know, if your camera were to bump into something, you're definitely gonna hear that up here as well. And um, I think the biggest downfall of this microphone and why so many people choose not to use it would be the fact that everything is done internally, like all the audio gain adjustments, and it's all automatic, meaning you cannot adjust this microphone. Whenever I turn my camera on, when, whenever I go to audio gain, it says this function is currently disabled. I talked to Sony reps about it. You cannot adjust the audio gain on this microphone. Now, with everything being automatic and me just walking around, doing a little bit of vlogging, talking directly to the microphone, it does a good enough job where I don't have to worry about it. But at the same time, I'm still going to be walking around with an additional microphone, whether it be the Video Mic Pro or Video Micro, just in case I come into a situation, you know, like a concert or something like that, or some just loud event where I need to make sure I don't have clipping audio. So it's just one of those things. I really wish Sony would kind of spice up this microphone a little bit because they have a really awesome idea. They just got to implement it a little bit better. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at some of the accessories that I'm supporting this. Um, I'm gonna start off with the Peak Design stuff. So I bought their Slide Light camera strap and um, obviously they come with these tethering options and also an Arca Swiss plate down there at the bottom. And since I've bought this camera, I have not moved this. And the reason being is because I had this awesome idea that I planned out earlier. So you can go to Amazon and you can find these Arca Swiss base plates for like nine or 10 bucks. They are super cheap guys and they're really high quality. And I also found a $9 pistol grip on Amazon. And whenever you mount that Arca Swiss to the bottom of your camera there and you get a base plate that's compatible with the pistol grip, check this out. This thing is not budging. I vlogged with this today and you guys are gonna see some footage here in a minute. This thing is super rigid. It is not going anywhere. And to me, this just makes sense. I don't understand why filmmakers and vloggers don't do this more often. You know, I see Casey Neistat all the time, you know, vlogging with this Joby, you know, like Gorilla Pod. And I've tried this before, guys, and it's just like super awkward to carry around. I understand, you know, it also benefits as a tripod, but that, guys, just works. Look how much more compact, lightweight that is. And you're like, well, what if I'm switching between photos and videos all the time? Like me, you can just loosen that up, drop it down, put it in your camera, your back pocket, and start shooting. I mean, it's just that quick. All right, guys, so that pretty much summarizes everything that you see right here, the pros and cons to all of the components. Um, just to show you all how awesome this rig is, I piece together a little like miniature vlog style video just so that you can see how powerful this little setup is. Go ahead and take a look.
All right, so it's like around lunchtime. I figured I might as well go down to the donor place. I'm starving. So I'm gonna try to get some flaring in this lens, some autofocus test, and just some stuff to show you guys what this package is fully capable of. Here we go. You guys might have seen that other vlog I did a while back um, with the Christmas market and us going to our second favorite kebab house here in Germany. That right there, my friends, is number one. His name's Reedy. He has a little shop over here in Brooklyn. And that dude just makes the absolute best donors and he's an awesome dude just to stand there and just chill with for a little bit. He's a really awesome guy. Highly recommend you going there. So today isn't just the day that I show you guys what this setup is capable of. It's actually my birthday, at least at the date of filming this. I don't know how long it'll take to put online, but uh, yeah, it's actually my birthday today. I turned 23, so uh, anyone that wants to wish me a happy birthday, feel free to do so. <laughs> All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up the video right there. I'm super pumped that you watched the video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I highly recommend you doing so because it is my goal this year to release at least one photography or videography related video every week. So a lot of awesome content is in store for you guys, so definitely stay tuned to check that out, all right? So get out there and start shooting, have some fun, all right? My name is Lynn McCall.